Hey there, this is Blake, Laura, and Reed, and this is a video for the Kentucky Junior Master Naturalist Project. What we're going to be doing today is something called the Insect Order Scavenger Hunt. So this is to show leaders of this project sort of how to do this activity. Um, first, we're going to go through some of the materials that you need, and the most important thing that you need for this project, in addition to helpers, and junior master naturalist is a good place. We're at a farm. Um, this is a farm where they do a lot of organic farming. So there's lots of crops, including um, the kinds of crops that you grow like corn and soybeans, but also things like beans and tomatoes. So garden crops. So the more different kinds of plants available, the better for finding lots of bugs. Also, this happens to be an organic farm. So an organic farm is a good place to look for bugs because they don't use any pesticides. And then the other thing that we have here that's very useful is a little indoor area to actually do our presentation. Some of the things that we have are right here. You need some kind of like a dry erase board or a chalkboard. Um, you could also potentially do this on like a digital screen and have the kids do a simple PowerPoint presentation, but something like a chalkboard or a whiteboard is what we're using today. You'll need your writing utensils. And one of the things that you're going to need for this activity is a bunch of containers. In most cases, you'll be um, have about four or five different groups of kids looking at the same time. And so you'll need a couple of dozen of containers um, for this project. Right now, we only have a couple because this is just an example. Another thing that we need are butterfly nets. Um, each group can just have one butterfly net. That's plenty. And we'll show you how to use those butterfly nets here in a little bit. Another good thing to have handy are some insect field guides because kids are going to be looking for some different representatives from different insect orders and field guides are, um, are a good way to do that. You can also use the internet to do that. These happen to be um, two of the best general insect field guides, the National Wildlife Federation field guide and the Kaufman field guide. And the other thing you'll need are these little cutouts. These are the insect order cards um, for the scavenger hunt that come with the activity. So you would print these out and clip them off. And this is the one we're doing for an example today. It's called Hemiptera. So the way that the insect order scavenger hunt works is that you'll divide your youth into a handful of groups and each of those groups will be responsible for finding examples of an insect order and then making a brief presentation about that order. So there's about a million different kinds of insects in the world and about 15,000 kinds of insects in Kentucky. That sounds like a whole lot, but those, they are all divided into about 30 different orders. And so once you learn those orders, it's a little bit easier to figure out what kind of insect that you have. But most insects are found in five or six orders, which is what this activity focuses on. So one of those, for example, is beetles, order Coleoptera, or flies, order Diptera. Another one is grasshoppers, order Orthoptera. Laura and Reed here are responsible for finding examples of and making a presentation on the insect order Hemiptera. So the other orders in this activity are Coleoptera, which is beetles, Lepidoptera, which is butterflies, Diptera, which is flies, and a few other ones. But we're going to do Hemiptera today. This is the one that we're suggesting that the leaders do as an example for their youth before the youth do the scavenger hunt because Hemiptera, even though it has a lot of species, is a little bit more difficult. But our helpers are up to the task. And so what they are going to do is each person is going to get a container. And Laura's going to grab a container. And then each person can have a butterfly net or if you only have one enough butterfly nets for each group to have one, that's okay too. And their job, don't run off yet you guys, but their job is to find at least three examples of their insect order. So these insect orders will be will be new to your youth, but then that's why we're giving them these um, scavenger hunt cards. So the order that they're responsible for is called Hemiptera. And you guys, this includes stink bugs, cicadas, aphids, and a few other things. This whole group is sometimes called the true bugs. And here are some examples over here. And you can see stink bug is in here, but also some things that look kind of like stink bugs, like squash bugs and also assassin bugs. There's also things called plant bugs. This group also includes cicadas, which we might find today, aphids, which are often plant pests, 
and uh, various things called hoppers. Not grasshoppers, but things like plant hoppers and leaf hoppers, which are very small creatures that are very good at hopping. This card also contains an explanation of a little bit about this order. And so your guy's job is to take about 15 or 20 minutes, and Laura has already caught a bug right here, um, to go find, like we said, at least three examples of these creatures. So do you guys kind of know what you're looking for? Yeah. All right, so let's go hunting. Before you um, set your youth loose looking for bugs, it's a good idea to explain to them a little bit about butterfly nets. For one thing, for this activity, you need real butterfly nets. Sometimes they sell little plastic butterfly nets to kids that are only about this deep. Um, those are really for fish and not good for insects. You need a long net that's almost two feet long and kind of see-through. So this is a true butterfly net. You can get these um, in places like Gimplers and um, Amazon has some good ones as well. If you're not sure, ask your uh, junior master naturalist um, team about that. But the way you use a butterfly net is that it's, it's not just for butterflies, but it is only used for insects that are flying in the air or insects that are sitting right on the edge of a very soft plant or flower. Um, so you catch things like dragonflies, um, flies, butterflies out of the air and you flip them over and then you have them caught. You can also, if you have a bug sitting on the edge of a very soft kind of flower or plant, now not a briar or something with branches on it, you can sometimes flick things off the edge and catch them. But this is not used for briars or woody plants because it will rip up your butterfly net. The other, uh, the other thing about your butterfly net is that one of your groups for this activity will probably be assigned Hymenoptera, which is the bees, ants, and wasps. Our group is doing Hemiptera, which is the, which is the true bugs. But if you're doing the bees, ants, and wasps, you'll probably have to catch a bee or a wasp at some point during the activity. And let me show you how to safely do that. So the way we do that is, if you see a bee or a wasp flying through the air, you catch it in your net, flip it over like this, and now it's trapped up at the top. So now, without touching the bee or wasp, you hold the net up like this. Bugs tend to fly up, so we hold the net up. Then we slowly work our container up through the net without touching the bee or the wasp. Then we eventually get it trapped up here so that the bee or the wasp is in the container. Then we work our lid up, once again, not touching the bug, get it to where it's trapped up there, pull the net out, and now we have safely caught a bee or a wasp without having to touch it. All right, so Laura here has found a hemiptera. She has found a stink bug. I'm gonna get a little closer. It's underneath this leaf here. And so sometimes um, for this activity, you don't need the, um, the butterfly net. In fact, most of the time you probably don't, especially with beetles and the true bugs. So Laura is gonna try to catch this one just with a jar. She can use either the lid or the jar or even her hands to catch this because the, um, the stink bug can't hurt people. So go ahead and try to catch it, Laura. Gonna do it with the lid. It's a good idea. Perfect, and then put the lid on. And you smile and display your catch. Laura and Reed are looking for different kinds of true bugs. A little bit about safety. So we're outside looking for bugs. Um, so there's no particular danger in doing something like this other than your just usual outdoor safety precautions. So we wore bug spray when we came. Um, it's not really the time of day that we need sunblock, but if we were out in uh, the middle of the day, we would want sunblock. And, um, and we do need to be careful, of course, of bees and wasps. So once again, if, you're, um, if your group, if one of your, your groups is assigned bees and wasps, um, they should be a little careful or maybe have a supervisor with them. Or like we mentioned, um, the, uh, the adult leader could do that group instead, the, the Hymenoptera group instead. And another thing that we mentioned in um, the leader's guide itself is another option for this project is instead of doing a physical scavenger hunt where the kids are catching bugs with a net and with lids, they could do a photo scavenger hunt. 
Okay, so Laura and Reed have found another example of Hemiptera here. This little creature that kind of looks like a triangle in there, that is one of the hoppers. I'm not exactly sure which kind it is. It's probably either a leaf hopper or a delphacid hopper or something like that. There's a whole bunch of different insects that look like this. They're kind of triangle shaped or wedge shaped and they can both fly and hop. And most of them are about a centimeter long or a little less. Laura has caught another true bug here. This one looks like the nymph stage of a plant bug or something like that. One thing that you will probably see when you're out doing these scavenger hunts are things called flower flies. These look a lot like bees and they are extremely common. Um, some people call them sweat bees. The way that we can tell that they are a fly instead of a bee is for one thing, they have two wings instead of four, which is one of the things the scavenger hunt is about, is how to tell the different um, groups apart. Um, but another thing is that these guys hover around you and some flies are able to hover, but bees can't. So if you see something hovering around you and trying to land on you, that's gonna be a hover fly. Um, there are things called sweat bees, but those are black or extremely dark green. Here's another example of a true bug. This thing is called a frog hopper. It's also called the adult stage of a spittle bug. Their babies sit on stems and put out a frothy stuff that looks like spit, but that's actually a protective chemical. We've been seeing a lot of stink bugs on this farm today. One of the things about Hemiptera that is at least sometimes distinctive is, especially on stink bugs and some of their close relatives, their wings cross over their back in a very geometric shape. You can see on this one how it's almost making an X shape on its back. Those are its wings crossing over and locking into place. If this was a beetle, the wings would meet in a very um, a very straight line or straight down the middle of the back and if it was something like a roach their wings would sort of flop over each other because sometimes you might need to put more than one bug into your jar and when you open the lid up it's a possibility that one of your other bugs can escape while you're trying to put a trying to put a new one in one way to keep that from happening is to grab a few leaves and to throw those in there with your bugs. You could also use paper towels for that. And what that does is that makes it a little bit harder for the ones that are trapped in there to fly out whenever you open the lid up. We found another excellent um, representative from the true bug order. This is called a milkweed bug. Um, they're sort of red and black and usually found on milkweed plants. And once again, just like a stink bug, their wings cross over each other in a very geometric way, kind of like an X shape. One of the things that are distinctive about this order Hemiptera is their piercing and sucking mouth parts. So if you look very closely onto the bottom of this stink bug, so its head is sort of going towards the right and the, the back is sort of towards the left. Um, in the middle of its body, it's got its legs and there's a groove going down the center where its mouth parts are. It's actually sticking its mouth part out just a little bit. It's making kind of a hook shape um, in front of my finger. And so instead of having chewing parts like most insects do, so beetles, grasshoppers, those all have chewing parts. This one has piercing and sucking parts that it uses to pierce into plant material and suck the juices out. Actually, the end of its piercing and sucking mouth parts right now has a little water bubble on the end. So one of the very common kinds of Hemiptera that we often find in gardens is the squash bug. Almost anytime you have squash plants, especially in an organic farm that has no pesticides, you'll find squash bugs eventually. So these are squash bug eggs, these little coppery colored things. And so that lets us know that somewhere around here, there's gonna be squash bugs. Here are some squash bug babies next to some eggs. Um, I'd rather catch for this project though some adult squash bugs because it'll be easier to see the features on them because they'll be a little bit bigger. Reed here has caught a squash bug. So this is another example of the order Hemiptera or the true bug group. Um, once again, these squash bugs kind of look like stink bugs. They're a little bit longer and a little bit bigger, um, but they are very, very similar. They still have the wings that cross over their back like an X and piercing and sucking mouth parts. And so Reed is going to add that one to his container. What we're doing next is we've caught our bugs and now we're coming back to make our presentation. Laura is drawing some of the bugs that she caught. 
I'm gonna start writing some text up here. This is all meant to be done very quickly. This doesn't have to be a super polished presentation. This is a field presentation. We're just catching things and telling people about them very quickly. Um, and the way that we do it isn't exactly the way that um, your youth need to do it. We're doing it kind of with, with text and with pictures, um, but you, uh, you could also use um, hand gestures. You can use a dance. There's other ways to, um, to convey your information. All right, so we're still working on our presentation. Everybody's taking apart. I did some of the words at the top, and my other team members, Reed and Laura, are doing some drawings of the bugs that they captured. But for the info that we're gonna do for our presentation, and our presentation is only just gonna be a couple of minutes long, we're gonna use the info that's on our little insect scavenger hunt sheet, and then also we can use field guides. So this field guide, for instance, this National Wildlife Federation field guide, is divided into the different insect orders. So this is the Hemiptera order. You can see all these creatures that kind of look like stink bugs once again. Then we'll go to the front of this section. True bugs, cicadas, hoppers, and their kin, order Hemiptera. And this has two pages of information about our creatures. So we can read through that and use some of those points for our little presentation. We can also find stuff on the internet. All right, so we're finishing up here. Our board is almost done, and in a moment, we're gonna do our final presentation. All right, so the order that we are presenting today is Hemiptera. So Hemiptera is the official scientific name for the order, but they're also called the true bugs. It's not a very good name for a group of insects, um, so this order is sometimes a little bit hard to understand what creatures belong to it, but this includes some familiar creatures including stink bugs, squash bugs, cicadas, aphids, and a few other things like scales and white flies and leaf hoppers. This is a picture of a leaf hopper. Most leaf hoppers are about a centimeter or even smaller. They're extremely common in the grass. Um, but a stink bug is a very typical member of this group. One of the, the things that's distinctive about many members of this group is the way that their wings cross over each other in almost an X shape. When you see that, you're almost certain you have a hemiptera. And then um, they also all have what's called piercing and sucking mouth parts. So instead of having chewing mouth parts, their mouths are actually segmented tubes that suck either plant fluids or in some cases, body fluids of other insects or sometimes even mammals up through that tube. So um, the Hemiptera is a pretty big group of insects. There are about 80,000 species in the world and about 12,000 species in North America. I'm not sure how many we have in Kentucky, but it's probably at least a thousand or so. And now for the next part of our presentation, we're gonna show the actual bugs that we caught and try to talk about how we know which group they belong to. So what do you got what have you got here, Laura? I've got a stink bug. Can you tell us anything about it? Um how you can tell if it's a stink bug. It has the X wings, like we've explained a lot, and it has the mouth part with the tube that pierces and sucks out stuff. The other one that Laura has captured is a milkweed bug. So she's gonna try to get that one out without it escaping. And so here is our milkweed bug. And once again, it's kind of stink bug, like it's a little bit longer than a stink bug, but it's kind of has kind of a shield shape and a little bit of a flat body and its wings meet in an X. All right, and now Reed has captured a squash bug. So this is our third example of the creatures that we found. So the squash bug is right down there. Once again, it's a little bit stink bug-like, but a little bit longer. Um, and once again, it's its wings meet in an X. Um, so those were our three examples, a stink bug, a milkweed bug, and a squash bug. Those three all, all happen to look fairly similar. Um, some things that we didn't really catch today were aphids or cicadas um, or scale insects. We did see some hoppers, but here's a really good view of that squash bug. All right, everybody, that is our presentation. Laura and Reed, you did a great job catching bugs and telling us about the bugs. Is there anything else you need to tell us before we say goodbye? Um, have a good day. All right, thanks and good bug hunting.